Well, good afternoon, Friendship Village. This is the voice of Friendship Village coming at you once again. And we are so happy to be with you and uh, happy to have you listening to us. And uh, we like to think of our program as being uh, informative and encouraging and what else, Mary? Fun. Fun. Yes, fun. And funny. And funny, yes, hopefully. And we have a funny guest with us today. Yeah. A fun guest. Maybe funny. I think funny. I think. And we'll meet her in just a little bit. But before we start there, I want to let our listeners know that this program is being sponsored by the bus driver crew of Friendship Village. They do a lot of good things for us, and we certainly appreciate their effort and their kind smiles and their uh, determination to make our bus rides fun but safe at the same time. And so uh, we appreciate, appreciate all you do, Leo and Gary and Andrew and uh, Rosalie. Rosalie and Al and Al. Andrew, yeah, we mentioned him. Well, but he gets double billing. Well, that's good. Okay, thank you, bus drivers, one and all. You know, several several of the people here in this uh, office preparing this podcast are grandparents. So here's a word. Here's a word for grandparents out there. How many are grandparents out? Let's see a show of hands. How many are grandparents? Yay! Okay. <laughs> Do you know that, I, I think you probably know if you're around children very much, that children seldom misquote. They usually repeat word for word what they hear. So you shouldn't, things that you shouldn't have said. Okay, I kind of botched up that joke. Uh, the punchline is, they usually repeat word for word what you shouldn't have said. <laughs> ah, that's a little better. Yes. So, around your grandchildren, be cautious about what you say. They're likely to repeat it. So, so anyway, uh, anything else from you, Mary? Mary Craven, my very capable and, and pleasant co-host today. Thank you. <laughs> It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, yeah. Like Mr. Rogers said, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. <laughs> one, words, one word of wisdom before we go on here. Um, let's see. What the world really needs is more warm hearts and fewer hotheads. Good. So, so if you're a warm heart out there, we need you in this world. If you're a hothead, uh, take a back seat, huh? Cool off. Cool off. Okay. Here we go. Our guest, Mary, would you like to introduce Yes, our, our guest? guest today is a lady by the name of Sharon Weber. She has not lived here very long, but she's a very interesting and vivacious lady. So I will introduce her and um, say, Sharon, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Glad <laughs> to be here. Good. And uh, Sharon, we'll start out with where were you born and raised? I was born in Minneapolis to my single mother, and so I was raised for the first five years with many of her relatives around the Mason City area. Like they passed you around? They passed me around, uh, Okay. yes. I don't remember a whole lot of it, but I did get to know great aunts and uncles. No, um, I assume that means they all wanted to have part of your life, Evident in their life. Evidently they... It wasn't that you were just a screw-up and nobody no. wanted to look at <laughs> Okay. No, pa pass the trouble around. <laughs> yeah, pass the trouble around. I, so my mother worked at John Deere's, which was why she wasn't capable of caring for me daily. Um, when I started school in Chicago, came to Waterloo for Christmas break, and went to Sacred Heart School, okay. staying in Waterloo the rest of my life. And Grad did you go to college? I did not go to college. I graduated from Sacred Heart School two years ahead of Phil, who also graduated from Sacred Heart. So you're two years older. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'll, I'll claim that. <laughs> okay. 
So I was 59, you were 57. Something, yes, it's that's something true. Like that. Okay. That, those are the years. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. So then, um, how did you start your career uh, after you graduated? Uh, my career after I graduated, well, I, I started out by working at Carnation Dairy as a receptionist uh, switchboard operator oh. and um, did that for several years. In high school, I met my husband. He was also a classmate. Um, his name is Ed. And we were married one year out of high school, so that was kind of my career. Okay. <laughs> Between working and housewife and all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. And then how soon did your children come along? Not for a while. My husband and I uh, wanted a big family. I was an only child. My husband was 12th of 14. Whoa. And so uh, I got into a family, so I had lots and lots and lots of my own relatives. And uh, when we had been married five years, the Vietnam War was getting very hot and my husband got drafted because we did not have children. Mm -hmm. So we spent two years in South Carolina. At the end of his two years, we came back to Waterloo. He went back to his job and I was pregnant with our first child. And uh, we went on and we had three children, mm -hmm. one of whom uh, our youngest daughter has already passed away six years ago. And because it was nice to have a big family, like my husband had, and I had not had, mm -hmm. um, as it worked out, he had a sister who was widowed early, was very ill, and she had nine kids. Wow. And we had been married about 16 years when she had to go into a home and we took the nine children into our home. Wow. Our kids were three, seven, and nine. And the youngest of those nine kids was 11. And they went up to oh. 20s. Okay. So did you have a big house for we everybody? We did have a big house. <laughs> if you're familiar with Waterloo, we have a big house in the Highland area. When we bought it, my husband was going, oh, what are we gonna do with this? We didn't know that God was had <laughs> super plans for filling it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, there were, uh, I don't think there were ever more than eight kids, uh, no that wouldn't be right, ten kids living with us, um, mm -hmm. our three and seven of the nine. Mm -hmm. okay. But because they were spread out in age, the older ones, the first, they moved with, in with us in a June. My oldest daughter was nine. We had a wedding that August. We had a wedding that December. We had a wedding the next March, and we had a high school graduation that May. <laughs> so as a new mom of a big family, it was real interesting. Mm -hmm. But lots of relatives supplied food, goodies. And you well, had built-in babysitters. It, we, uh, we did, <laughs> yeah. that, it was wonderful. Yeah. Where'd they all go to school then, did they? they what happened was the older children had already, the older ones who had graduated had gone to Don Bosco. Okay. The, they, were, they had lived in Raymond. But when they moved in with us, we said, okay, we're gonna have five kids in school. So we're gonna have a, you know, we're gonna have a kid in kindergarten at Francis Grout. We're gonna have some grade school kids at St. John's. We're gonna have some high school kids and we had one boy going into his senior year. We uh, told the rest of the kids, the other five kids, that they would have to go to Columbus for high school, that we could not, <laughs> we couldn't function with all those different schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did end up letting the, older, the oldest boy uh, graduate from Don Bosco. So he lived at home with us. By the way, their mother was still alive. She, she had been institutionalized in what I call the old St. Francis Hospital, Pinecrest now. And um, so while the children were with us, she lived for four more years. Mm -hmm. 
and then the children stayed with us until maybe two years after she died. So at the most, we had those kids for six years, a variety of ages mm -hmm. uh, and functions. Well, that's very, very wonderful that you, as like you say, an only child to take in that many, but it sounds like you thrived on it. I did. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. My husband had some trouble, like in the first few months, he would tell about going to the local grocery store and parking in the lot for maybe a half hour, 40 minutes. Just, just for a break. Yeah, for a break. <laughs> it didn't hit me until maybe after Christmas. They had moved in in June. By about Christmas, I think I was getting overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. wow. But by that time you're getting settled, the kids are getting settled, we've worked our way out of it. You know, this, your story would have made a good sitcom, wouldn't it? Yeah. All those kids. <laughs> the Brady Bunch. Yeah, it Brady really Bunch. was. Mm -hmm. Goodness sakes. Biggest thing, so I have one family moving in and I have this younger family that Ed and I had already started, right? Yeah. Sure. So, we were advised everybody should have a job that's a part of being a, my, a member of the family living in the house we had a big house and a lot to do so we gave everyone jobs when i said saturday morning okay everybody get to it i had five six people who snapped right to it and then there were those three youngers of our old ah, of our own they're used to hearing me give orders. They didn't follow through real ah. well. It was interesting. <laughs> so they've all gone on and had good lives, I hope? Yes. So of our three children, mm -hmm. we have um, uh, 11 grandkids and eight great-grandchildren. Oh my goodness. Great. And um, of the nine children that we took in, Remember, both their mother and their dad were dead. And so they called us Ed and Sharon, but their children called us Grandma, Grandma and, and Grandpa. Grandpa. So we have 19 <laughs> grandkids that, that, aren't, that are actually our great nieces and nephews yeah. that call us Grandma and Grandpa. Wow. And I want you to know I've been to 17 of those weddings now. <laughs> I have no idea how many kids those kids, those yeah. 19 have. I gave up trying to figure it out. I guess so. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh. Wonderful. Wonderful. Hey, this seems like a good place to maybe have a brief pause in our interview. We'll get back with Sharon. She has more exciting things to share <laughs> about her life. And uh, so... What I want to say is just to invite our listeners to consider becoming a, 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 a guest on our program to be interviewed. There are many, many important people out there listening to this and many uh, interesting lives to, to share a little bit about. So if there's any, any inclination that you might want to consider such a move, please let your uh, secretary at the office of the building you're in know and they'll get in touch with us and we'll we'll take it from there and uh, also just another reminder is that this program is being sponsored by the bus drivers at friendship village <clears throat> next time you hop on a bus give them a big smile and a thank you for us that'll be good do that That'll i appreciate the bus drivers because they know waterloo so well um, you have to go someplace, you give them the address, and they get you right to it. So they're all very familiar with areas in Waterloo. It's not like they get lost or go up and down streets. I, I just think that's great that they hire guys that, and our one gal, Rosalie, that knows the territory. You know, it's amazing, grandparents out there listening, it's amazing how grandparents seem so young once you become one. <laughs> How I mean, true. I, I'm sitting in a room with two grandparents and myself, a grandfather, and we seem kind of young to me. So. Well, I think we are a little bit on the younger side. Okay. Compared to some of our neighbors. <laughs> true. But so. age is just a number, I guess. Yeah. Okay, one quick joke, then we'll get back to, to Sharon. 
what what makes a baseball stadium cool? Hmm. 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 What makes a baseball stadium cool? It's How about all the fans? The fans. <laughs> oh, you, you, oh. Mary is sharp. Sharp, sharp Mary. She figured it out. The fans. <laughs> the fans make the baseball hmm. stadium cool. And uh, before we got on, on air today, we were reminiscing about the, uh, the game last Thursday at the, the Field of Dreams. That was quite an exciting night, and uh, we all enjoyed watching what we did watch. And uh, uh, Sharon mentioned all those home runs going out into the cornfield. And mm. do you think they're forever lost, or some <laughs> kids maybe got hired? Yeah, to, I think they I think got their kids. For. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be quite a prize, wouldn't it? Oh, I yes. guess. Gosh, okay. Well, here we are, back with Sharon. Sharon. Where, where do we pick up here today? Um, I want to ask her how long were you and your husband married before he passed away? He passed away last year. Uh, that would be a year ago, April. He, uh, and we had been married 62 years. 62 years, yeah. Oh, yes. So, um, yeah. He passed away and you moved in here. Absolutely. Actually, yeah. I had the house sold a month after he died. Remember now, we uh, we had this huge house. The kids had all been gone for a long time. He died in April, I sold the house in May, and I moved out of my house in June, and mm -hmm. I was in here by August. Wow. So this past weekend was my one year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And what do you like about living here? Oh, everything. <laughs> I like that someone comes and cleans my place mm -hmm. every other week. Yeah. I love that my food, I can either have a tray brought to me that of food that I ordered, or I can go to the dining room and pick from the buffet table. Um, and by the way, the food is delicious, and they warn you the 10 pound. I heard warm. 15, I heard yeah, 15. Mine was a 10 pound warning when you, <laughs> when you, okay. I've done well though, I haven't done it. Because you go out and walk, you are a walker. Yes, actually. You out walking. Yes, that's another thing I like about this. I, in, when it was winter, I walked the halls of village, uh, of, what, what are we, this is village place. Yes. So I walked the halls here because there is a five story. I, you can just walk and walk and walk. And now that nice weather is here, I walk outside. But there's also the exercise room that they have even put some new equipment in yes. in the last month or two. Um, so you can exercise on your favorite machine and watch TV. It's wonderful. Like, yes. <laughs> oh, um, what else? Oh, I mean, and the people. Oh my goodness, the people are so friendly. It's crazy. I moved in during COVID, masks at all times, and um, we're back to masks at all the, t all the time now. And we have stayed safe. Mm -hmm. We in Village Place have stayed safe. I think we can be so thankful for that. Oh, yes. so I, thankful. Yes, I, That's a blessing from God. Plus the administration telling us, here's what you need to do to be safe. Do your distancing. Wear your mask. Um, and we all got our shots. Yes. Yeah. And they supplied them. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, they, did. they came in and did shots for us. Yes. So. And yeah. we might be getting a booster, another booster. Yes, we may. By September. Right. And it, it, I probably, if they offer it to me, I will definitely take it. But I'm not, I'm not health. I don't have any major problems. But they will start with the older generation. Yes. They, I heard that already. Okay. Yeah. And, and Is that you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and some of the people who, are, who have other medical problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. My other medical problems are I get stiff every now and then from walking. Other than well, that. <laughs> occupational hazard. Huh? Yes, yeah. definitely. Well, we all three of us belong to the exercise program. I, oh, yes. And that's really good. We it look is. forward to that. When we don't have it. I feel like yeah, I need it. Yeah, but I usually just wait till they resume it and go again. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil, you're a runner, aren't yeah. you? You run. Uh, yes, yes, I do. It's uh, 
it's called the uh, the Porter Shuffle. <laughs> okay. It's kind of a slow. I've jog. seen right. I've seen you when I was out walking. You were out going much quicker. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you want the last, the next chapter of my life? Well, certainly. Or not. Oh yes. I know we're on a time thing. Well. After my husband, my husband retired early from Deers. I can I, after the children grew up, I went to work part time at the courthouse in the clerk's office as a microfilmer. I did the first records I microfilmed were 1854. Whoa! So um, I started there in the 70s. I worked there until the 90s. And in that time, my husband was retired. He was a walker. He walked six miles a day mm. uh, until his hips kind of gave him some problems. He, uh, we are Catholic, and he applied for and was accepted into the deacon. training for a deacon. deacon. So he is a he was a permanent deacon in the Catholic Church, which gave us a whole new. Um, chapter in our lives, right? Yeah. Basically, right. he, the thing he was used most for was jail prison ministry. He was the first coordinator for our diocese, and uh, he did funerals in funeral homes for people who did not have their own minister okay. and still wanted something religious for their family. That was kind of his. So I'm kind of a backup to all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. He didn't touch a computer. He said, if anything happened to me, the first thing out the door would be the computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was a whole different chapter of our lives. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that a year ago, I started a new chapter. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, so I think we've all found that out in one way or another. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we went along with one part of our lives and, and then, then after it, a few years it flipped it flipped to another part of our lives mm -hmm. and that had to do with getting married having children getting them through school working at your jobs getting the children leaving home securing their lives getting jobs and having children and then having the grandchildren come into our lives and then working until it was time to retire and then picking up and going someplace else with your retirement or traveling or whatever you do. So we've moved along in chapters yes, of our I, lives. I've often thought of it as chapter. Uh, one chapter of my life was I had worked 19 years at the clerk's office. At that point I changed and I became a health aide in the which is the nurse's assistant mm -hmm. in the public school, high schools. Oh. Now, because I had a very background with a lot of kids and doing a lot of stuff, I was the health aide at the EDC, which is Educational Disciplinary Center. So these are sixth, seventh, and eighth graders who are basically incorrigible. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Expo, which is the high school students who are basically wonderful young adults. They're the most responsible adult in their lives. I loved that aspect of mm -hmm. my life also. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Wow. So you're very diversified. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I think so. I think yeah. so. This is the idea that Phil and I have had by doing these podcasts. We get to know the residents that live here, we get to know their background and a lot about them, which we wouldn't ordinarily know because the short time that we have getting together to visit is a short time. Yes. And we get together for activities, we get together for everything. But when you sit down and do a one on one or a two on one and uh, bring it all out, and then people can enjoy listening to it, they learn a lot about their fellow residents. Yeah. So I think it's been a very worthwhile project that we are doing. I would have to add to that that I am so pleased 
that you guys do this, mainly because um, I have watched your podcasts okay. um, I, on my laptop at my place, and I dearly loved hearing the stories about of the other people. A lot of it was when they would tell you how old they were, and you'd see them doing all these different things, you'd be going, oh my goodness. <laughs> it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it is a nice thing. You. Hey, and we are about winding down here. Thanks again, Sharon, for oh. sharing. Sharing, Sharon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I, I feel privileged to be able to do this. Okay. Saying here. Okay. Or a little thing. Civilization has taught us to eat with a fork. But every now and then, if nobody's around, we use our fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. the truth. Here's a quote. Here's a quote I heard a couple mornings ago on TV, and I, it's kind of stuck with me. And uh, it's from Winston Churchill. Oh, he was good. So he has he's responsible for many good quotes. But anyway, he said on this one occasion, he said, uh, "Fear is a reaction, and courage is a decision." Ah, think about that's that deep. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. That's fear. Fear is just a reaction. Absolutely fear. right. But cur yeah, courage, yeah, you have to decide. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Very good. Well, that might be a good place to stop. I think so. Yes. So, uh, so once again, thanks all the bus drivers for sponsoring this program. Thanks for sharing for being here and uh, uh, giving us a glimpse of your lively life <laughs> over the years. And uh, Mary, my capable co-host. I'm getting better at that word, mm -hmm. co-host. I used to call a cohorst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're about ready to sign off. And before we do, as we usually do on our programs, we like to say, may the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. Goodbye, Friendship Village. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>